a lot of people ask, where do you put the inspection rings? How do you put them? How do you know where to put them? This is one reason I really like to cover the bottom of the wing first with the top open. Now we can go right in from the top side and decide exactly where these inspection rings have to go. So what makes it very easy, you know, things, these are a plastic ring. A lot of them will have some flashing around the edges from the mold. It's a good idea to just trim those edges off a little bit when you end up gluing them down and putting your patch around them. It's going to lay in much smoother. Okay. Now, for inspection rings, they're your access to the internal part of the wing once it's covered. In areas that you want to be able to inspect are junctions such as your drag anti-drag wires here. We've got our junctions at each one of your compression strut areas. You've got areas where you've got pulleys. We've got areas where, not on this wing, but on the other wing, we actually have the P-dot tube comes out. We need access into those areas. So to make it real easy, because we can look through right from the top side, we can lay that ring in there and say, OK, where's a good location to put this ring so I've got access to this area if I need to inspect it or do some maintenance on it? So we can look right through the top of the wing. And this pencil mark we're putting on here will show right through the back side of that fabric. And once the airplane's completely covered and we're ready to start gluing our inspection rings on, they're already pre-marked. We, we know exactly where to glue them. We don't have to guess or get a bright light and try to shine through the fabric and figure out where that ring should go. There, that ring's marked. A lot of these rings will have a casting mold on the edge of them, leaves a pretty good bump. You want to take your sharp razor or knife, if there anything like that, trim that off of these rings, clean up any flashing, because you don't want that to show through your finished patch. And what we've done is previously marked our, our covers here where we don't want them to go. If you recall earlier when we had just the bottom of the wing covered, we actually pre-marked these areas on the inside of the fabric. We could look down through the wing before the top cover went on. So that's what we're looking at right here. It's actually an ink, or a soft lead pencil line that was put on the inside of this fabric. To glue the rings on, procedure's pretty much just like we've been doing. Here we'll go ahead and brush a coat of wet glue down through our previously marked ring location. And then we're going to go ahead and brush some glue on the back side or the flat side of the ring. Now while that glue is still wet, I'm going to lay it in place. I like to turn it a little bit just to make sure that glue's bedded in real well. You can see it pushes up around the edges. Not a big problem. We just take our towel and just wipe the surplus. You don't need to get every bit of that off because we're going to be ironing a doily over this a little later, be gluing one on it. And that'll really finish this ring off. Okay, we've uh, demonstrated how to glue the inspection rings on. Uh, I've glued them on all the wing. This one is ready for the glue to be applied. What we do on this, after the ring is in place, this pre-glues it in preparation to put the doily patch on over the top of it. What we do is just brush in a real nice semi-wet coat of glue and come out about a quarter of an inch or so past the outer radius of the inspection ring here. Try to lay on a smooth coat of glue so you don't have a lot of brush marks and ridges because when this dries those will tend to show through. So right there is about what you want to look for. After that has sat and dries what you've got up here on this ring right here is what you're going to have that one is ready for the doily. Now what we do for the doilies, I like to have about an inch wider border than what the ring is. That's a four inch ring. What happens that a coffee can lid is about six inches in diameter. And that makes an ideal pattern to mark your doily out on. 
Okay, we've marked out two doilies. Okay, we've got a doily cut. We're going to go up to this pre-glued ring and I'm going to show you how to lay that into place. Now, because this glue is dry, but still semi-tacky, it makes this a very simple procedure. You can lay the doily in place. Because there's no wet glue to work, you can scoot it around, figure out about where you want it, try to get it as close to centered as you can. That looks pretty nice right there. Lay it in place and just take your finger and rub the center portion of this. What we're doing is just lightly bonding that into the dried glue, just like we've done with our tapes on the perimeters and other areas. Now I take my fingernail and I crease the fabric right into the junction on the inner radius of the inspection ring and the fabric area where they've glued together. Once that's done, again we use our heat to lock it in place and take the iron, take the tool of the iron and run it around right against the fabric and the inner radius of that plastic inspection ring. Now we've lightly heat bonded that fabric in place. Now you can take your fingers and just rub around that patch. Because it's a circle, it'll act almost like a piece of bias tape. It'll actually go around these compound curves and fill in real well. Work it out, get the wrinkles off the top of the, the plastic inspection ring, and then as you hold a little tension toward the outside edge of the radius, go ahead and same procedure, Use your fingernail or a you know a little sharpened popsicle stick or whatever works for you to run around here and lightly pre-crease that fabric. As you can see here, what we've got now, we've got a very nice tight fit on the inside, we've got a nice fit on the outside. Again, we're going to take our iron and just heat activate that. If you recall when we glued these rings down and we wiped the excess glue off, I mentioned that it doesn't hurt to have a little glue left around these edges. Also notice we're keeping the iron up well away from the edges. If you get down too low, you're going to shrink your doily. And at that point, you probably want to peel it back off because it's never going to look just right. Again, it's back to our old glue and wipe procedure. I start in the center. Brush glue down into that area. This time I also like, if it's not real hot and you've got time to work the glue, I like to go ahead and come up around the upper perimeter out just past the outer edge on the plastic ring. You have to get it wet enough to totally encapsulate the fabric, but you don't want it so sloppy wet that you've got a lot of materials you've got to try to wipe back off. Okay, that's well glued, and I start in the center, kind of wipe toward the edge. All we're doing here is just getting the surplus glue off that will tend to show through your finish if you don't get rid of it. You don't have to wipe it real heavy, just enough to pick up the surplus. There you go. Now, there's two options. We can brush the glue down through this fabric ring or we can put it up underneath. I've done both ways. I find personally, for my part, it's a little faster just to pre-glue like this. Brush the glue down. You don't have to work the brush quite so much to get a good 100% bond doing it like that. I do about half of it at a time. Again, just lightly wipe the surplus glue spoilage off of there. Repeat it for the second half of the radius here. Just a light coat of glue brush down underneath. And then brush some glue right down through the top. You know, sometimes you get a little aggressive when you push the brush under there, you can push this joint loose. If you don't stretch the doily, it's not a problem because it's already been pre-creased and naturally wants to lay into there. So again, we can take it here. If you lifted an area a little bit, just make sure when you wipe the glue that you push that fabric right back down in there nice and tight. 